Always a pleasure to talk to my next guest, Chandler Cole, and he will fight next this Saturday, March the 27th at Showcase MMA when he meets Marcus Malden. Chandler, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. I love that Cormier shirt in the, in the background. That's tough. I got I got a whole bunch of these, man. I, I actually I got a buddy that has like the uh, the professional unit to do like screen printing. So I bought a bunch of like empty, you know, UFC shirts like that, and I've had them like custom made. So I got like that GSP one that's right behind me over there. Yeah. So yeah, I, I got all kinds awesome. of stuff. But we need to talk about you, man. This is uh, <laughs> you're really getting some some big things coming for you. Uh, obviously, this next fight could you'd be seven and two if you get a win. But you just picked up a big one, round one uh, victory via uh, strikes over Derek Weaver, uh, just at the end of January. So not that long ago. Let's recap that fight, man. Big win. Uh, how did you feel after capturing that victory? Oh God, uh, I was full of emotions. You know, I think in, in the last interview I talked about you know just everything that I had to go through like the last couple months and just, uh, you know, I didn't, dude, I haven't felt like a winner since 2019. You know, I haven't, I haven't won since, uh, uh, I think it was either May or June of 2019. So just to win again, uh, just was an overwhelming, uh, amount of, uh, emotions, you know, cause after I lost Keith Bell, it was like literally a loss and it was like, life hit man it was loss after loss after loss after loss after loss so when i won and i felt like a winner it was the best feeling in the world uh and i told myself i'll do anything to keep this feeling so i've been training my butt off that's really what's motivated me uh from last fight to this fight to just keep training to keep working hard and just to, to put on a show man just to, to do what i love to do and that killer be killed man i'm telling you killer be killed i i, I, I don't fight to decisions i fight to kill so uh, hopefully the fans will enjoy it and uh, super excited, super stoked for this weekend. So for anyone that didn't get to see your most recent fight, uh, the win over Weaver, run us through the finish, man. How did that present itself for you? So I came out and uh, I, I wanted to stand up with him. Uh, I threw a really good inside leg kick. And when I threw the overhand right, because uh, I was bouncing back and forth, that little style, I think he was really waiting on the takedown. So when I lowered my level and came up, over the top with the overhand right. The first one rocked him, uh, and he hit the cage. And I told my coach, I didn't even know, because I was underneath. So when I came, bam, hit him, and then my body hit, and he hit the cage, and I was on top, and I was basically, like, had him pinned against the cage. I didn't even realize he was rocked. Uh, but in the video, he uh, he goes like a, what do I call it, like a, uh, like a baby deer. Like, it just, his body was <laughs> all uh, funky looking. And he hits the cage, and he, he circles off to the right, and I throw another overhand right, and I hit him again. And, um, you know, uh, foolish me, gave him time to recover. But uh, we were on the cage, I was controlling his biceps, and uh, where he's taller than me, he was landing some good shots, uh, just over the top. Uh, hit me, and I was like, all right, well, he if, if he knocks me out from here, I'm, I'm going to feel like weenie anyways. I don't think he can hit me. I don't think he can knock me out from here. So he just tabbed me. I was taking those shots, and I just kept trying to take him down. He kept fighting off pretty well. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to irritate him. Uh, I'm going to be here and be real annoying uh, until the opportunity presents itself. Uh, as soon as I felt uh, his weight shift to his legs, you know, you're on your toes, you're fighting, you're fine. As soon as I felt him settle, I was like, let's go time. You know, he's, he's, he's content with being on the, his back against the cage. Time to switch it up. Time to take him out. And now that he's comfortable, time to take him out of his comfort zone. I grabbed a single leg. I pulled it. He went to bounce, and I just dumped it. And that's probably one of the – everybody that was freaking out, they was like, dude, you dumped him. You lifted a 260-pound guy. Oh, my God. But if anyone who knows wrestling knows, like, it was just, like, it was the perfect positioning. Like, it's not <laughs> – I was like, guys, y'all acting like I'm Hercules. Like, literally, I just pulled the leg, and when he came over top of the back, I just lifted up. Uh, dumped him, got on top, uh, and we got a real funky position. I actually got a reverse triangle, and if I had known that he was, uh, if I had known that he was uh, actually locked in, if I knew it was actually sunk in, I'd have just kept it. I'd have sat on him, but he uh, he definitely, oh gosh, little demon child's up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, nah, uh, if I'd have known it was sunk in, man, I'd have definitely, uh, I'd have definitely held on to it. But uh, all all played out well. Uh, some great ground and pound, and uh, just ended up finishing the fight. I heard the 10 second clapper, and I said, I'm not going to the second round. Like I told everybody, I wanted a first round finish. I'm not going to the second round. So, as soon as I heard the, 
I just stood up and just unloaded. I was like, okay, I know that I got a minute to recover. He's tired. I, I seen it in his face when I was on top. I seen his lips. I seen how, how like they were like a bluish color. I was like, I know he's tired. This pressure's really got to him. Uh, I'm, I'm dumping my load on him right now. Like I'm 100% going to just throw. And if not, I know I got a minute to recover. Uh, but that's what I trained for. So super good finish though. Super good finish. It was a lot of emotions and, you know, Derek Weaver wasn't a chump, so like for me to go out there and finish him just felt it felt amazing. And you told me before we went live that you got a little emotional after the after the fight. Uh, you ran out and, and found the, uh, the 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 promoters, the matchmakers, and said you wanted to get right back in there again soon. So run me through what transpired uh, right there after the fight. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Hold on, okay. Hold on one second, okay. You want to come here? Okay, you. you want to come here? Hold on one second, right? Oh, I'll let you do this interview with me, baby. So, Hi. this is uh, this is the one reason why I cried, man. Is like being a dad is like the, the the best feeling in the world. And uh, since like 2019, man, I really had it felt like a winner. Uh, but you know because of you know, with everything going on, uh, it was just a great feeling to be able to, to take care of business for her. So, uh, oh God, it was, it was crazy, man. I just, a whole lot of emotions was running through my head. Uh, when they got the microphone, they asked me, they was like, uh, what do you want to do? And I said, or they was like, oh, what's next with Chandler Cohen? I, I was crying my eyes out and I said, you know, cause I'm a talker. I'm always on the mic, always like put on a show, like, entertain the fans but I, I was crying my eyes out man I was just like um I'm sorry but I just want to go hold my daughter and uh, I ran out and I had a moment in the back I finally got my daughter and then I finally got the promoter so I was like I want to fight March I want to fight March put me on the card so uh she's uh being real uh let me grab it oh, man. she's being real <laughs> but yeah uh a lot of emotions man a lot of emotions and uh at the end of the day, this is exactly what I fought for. Uh, this is my pride and joy. Family is what it's all about, man. And then you got an adorable little girl there. It's funny as we're having Can this conversation. Hi. Can you say hi? <laughs> she, 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 she's shy. She's yeah. super. She's more concerned with her toy. I don't have a, have a daughter just yet, but I do have a little one. <laughs> Oddly enough, she jumped right in my lap while we're doing this <laughs> interview right here. So she does this every once in a while, but this is Sophie. She's uh, she's my fiance's dog. It was a package deal when I got with her, so and she's stolen my heart. <laughs> right, right. No, I I completely I understand that, man. Uh, like I all my pets when I was growing up, like sadly they passed away. But you'd have thought that it was like a like a legit funeral. Like oh my god, like look, people don't realize people who don't own pets don't realize that they're part of your family. Like they legitly are. Like they're a piece of your family. So. Uh, I'm not allowed to own pets in my apartment, <laughs> so it's so all done. You want down? Here you go. Go play. Okay. Go play. You want your cuppy? Here you go. So tell me, what has that dynamic been like for you uh, now that, that you know life is back to normal? Uh, you had that fight. You got the big win. H how has that been as far as balancing family life with training uh, and work? Uh, you know, I still sacrifice a lot of time, uh, and yeah, what I, I keep telling myself one day, uh, you know, I I'm, I hope that she don't hold it against me. I hope that she's more thankful for it uh, than anything, because uh, it, it, we get, we'll we'll have these interviews to look back at. You know, everything I do is for her, uh, but uh, hopefully she's thankful, man. Uh, hopefully she's she she understands. So. I do take a lot of time away from, uh, I don't have a girlfriend, my baby mama, she's out there, <laughs> she, uh, but, uh, you know, that's actually, uh, crazy now, I shouldn't really put it on blast, but we were actually working on things, and she told me that I just trained too much, so, it's lifestyle ain't for everybody, uh, mm -hmm. I, I spend a lot of time, uh, doing my craft, I do, I spend a lot of time just working, trying to better myself, so, I just hope that she don't hold it against me like, you know, her mom does. <laughs> well, it seems like she she won't. You seem like to be a, a very good dad. And, you know, you, you can just tell by the interactions that you're having with her right there. So I'm sure when she gets older, she'll see that. Um, as far as training, you talk about training too much. 
how has this camp been in comparison to other camps? Have you brought in anyone new or has it just been kind of like a, a par for the course type camp with the same partners? Uh, a lot of the same partners. Uh, the only difference is like, I've got to grab hold of like some new people that not new people to the game, but like new body sense Chandler 2.0s come into town. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, some people that I, that I've trained with back, uh, a couple years ago, so people come in and train and they're like, Oh my God, dude, like you're on another level right now. I'm just thankful for it. I'm thankful for the compliments. Uh, like I said, I really, I really do be working for this. So I'm super blessed. Uh, and, uh, yeah, just, uh, same team though. Same, same mindset, same motto, same game plan. Just, just train like you're train. Like I'm fighting John Jones. <laughs> stepping in the cage with because you never know when your skill set's gonna get to deteriorate during a fight and your guts and your in your heart and it's gonna have to push you and at the end of the day you can have all the guts and the hearts if you want but if it ain't ran by lungs then he has some problems so awesome. i really try to work hard try to make sure that my cardio is there uh uh you know I, I was just talking to james uh I got on his Facebook just to, I'm a creeper got on his Facebook just to look at like the stuff see how he's promoting the fight see if he's doing as good of a job as I am because I think I'm doing good uh, and I've seen that like a lot of people was like on there like oh when are you going to fight someone real when are you going to fight a good fighter when are you going to fight why are you fighting Teletubbies bro like that's the thing like yo this is going to be the worst childhood TV show you've ever seen like don't <laughs> don't get it twisted I, my whole life I've had people look at me and uh judge me off the way I look they're like oh man you know you're, you're a little chubby and stuff but when it comes when the lights are on I, that stuff don't matter um and I've put a lot of hard work into getting my weight down uh so uh you know, a lot of those comments fueled me a couple of weeks ago I'm like you know what that's all right that's all right because you'll have to pay for those sins all those people that you surround yourself with don't want to run that mouth you have to pay for it on Saturday. Uh, I don't take this as personal. It's business, but in my eyes, business is a little business is personal because it's like you know that's what pays my bills. Uh, I got a, I got a great job, but at the same time, it's like all the extra money it means everything to me. Uh, you know, for the first time, I got to buy her. You know, we I've had a hand me down bed for my apartment. I had a hand me down bed for her. Now I just bought two brand new beds. I know that to a lot of people they're like, oh, that's good. But to me, it's like, oh my God, no, dude. Like I finally did something. I have done this. I've done that. Just, uh, you know, and it's all from just extra work too. Uh, yeah, I do plan on cutting a 205, but I know that I'm fighting heavyweight this fight. I'm fighting uh, one more heavyweight fight, hopefully. If, if, if God forbid, you know, I, I hate to, I hate to plan things in the future because you don't know what's going to happen. But if I win, you know, I, I do think I'm due for a title shot uh, for the promotion. And I think, you know, finish what I started at uh, at Showcase. I, 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 this will be my third heavyweight fight. I want to fight. And then hopefully the next one's for the belt. And then I'd love to cut to 205. And then I'll, whoever they got, I want to fight them. I want to fight who, the, the, the 205ers of the world. So... So your opponent now, Marcus Malding, he's eight and twelve, but that record isn't really a great, accurate representation of you know maybe how good he is because you look at a couple of the guys he's lost to. He's lost to Josh Parisian, uh, Travis Davis, so he's lost to some some legit guys here. When you look at this matchup, how do you feel you, you stack up against him? Do you feel like you you should be like an overwhelming favorite, or do you feel like he's a little bit better than his record uh, represents? He's definitely better than what his record represents. Uh, I think that if he trained appropriately, I think that the, the – Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I think if uh, he trained appropriately, then uh, it, it the fight will be good. Uh, I think that if he took me lightly, though, it would be a bad night. I think, I, 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 like I said, uh, whether I'm fighting a Marcus Modding or a John Jones, like that's what I trained for. I trained like – you know, everything I do is been five, five minutes around. So, like, uh, everything I – all my circuits – I try to blast the first three because that's my fight. And then uh, championship rounds, all about heart. So that's right. <laughs> so that's, that's really all I've been doing is just focusing on, like, going the extra mile, going the extra mile. So whether it's John Jones or Marcus Malling, like I said, I train, I train to kill. I train to, 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 to fight the best because you never know when that call is going to happen. And I don't want to, to get the call and not be ready. So uh, 
he's good fighter. Uh, I, I guess we'll find out Saturday who's the better one, though. Uh, you know, record can really play a big factor, but uh, it's man versus man. That's how I look at it. Uh, how, how do you see this fight finishing? you feel like you're going to get a quick finish, uh, maybe a knockout? I mean, it, it's not going to decision. <laughs> I tell you that. I, uh, I don't, I don't fight for. Oh, you want to brush my hair? Uh, you know, I don't fight for. Uh, I don't fight for decisions. That's not what people buy tickets for. Uh, it's kill or be killed. Fight to kill. Uh, so yeah, I'm always going out there trying to trying to knock people's My heads off. Twenty five, you know this. Oh, Chloe, yeah. Uh, so you know, amateur and pro fights combined. You know, Derek Weaver made my twentieth fight. I've had one decision. So yeah. I'm not trying to. I don't. I don't. I don't do that decision stuff. I'm not a, not a fan of that. So uh, yeah, it'll be kill or be kill. Uh, I think uh, my pressure is going to be a problem. Uh, and if he handles it well, then we'll have a real technical fight. If he doesn't, then he's gonna have a lot of he's gonna be fighting me plus all those all those demons in his head because it's a weird style to fight. When you fight pressure, it's really weird. Uh, and everybody has a game plan for it <laughs> until they get in there against somebody that that doesn't. You know, DC don't look like he's overly you know good, but when he puts that pressure on you, you don't know what to do. Could be Nurmagomedov. That's one thing that makes him the greatest is. Uh, his pressures, undoubtedly, like uh, surreal. So, are, are, if you go in here and you get this win, obviously you'll improve to seven and two. You talk about maybe fighting for the the title shot next for for showcase. Um, how far away do you think you are from him getting that call? I mean, heavyweights in particular, it seems like you know the UFC will jump and and bring someone in maybe that you know doesn't have twelve or thirteen pro fights. So you could be on the doorstep of a contender series shot. Does that seem like it could be coming in, in 2021? Uh, well, Dana Watt, uh, if you're going through YouTube and you see this uh, video, 276-455-4004, call me. Uh, that's, if you ever need anybody, I'm, I'm the mouse. I'm staying ready. So uh, whether it's uh, a four-week notice or four-minute notice, like, just let me know. All right. Well, it all begins uh, this Saturday. March the 27th, your next step towards making a, a UFC roster spot when you meet Marcus Malding for Showcase MMA. Uh, Chandler, man, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, before I let you go, tell people where to find you on social media. Um, and if there's any tickets that are still being sold, man, tell them uh, how they can buy tickets to, to go watch the fight in person. If you're going to uh, buy tickets, you just got to need to get a hold of me. Uh, I can meet up with you and uh... – get them if not and there's a website uh just get with me and i'll get you the link uh uh i want to thank all my sponsors uh my family and stuff for the sacrifices that they make uh i want to thank this little girl because she sacrifices a lot of time with me so that daddy can train uh i just want to uh uh thank you man uh for having me back on that's awesome uh i was telling i know i keep bringing them up but i was telling uh lynch i was like man without y'all like you know, y'all don't realize how much of a role that y'all played in this game. Uh, so uh, I, I appreciate the media yeah. side of it more than anything. I, yeah. I'm actually wanting to start a podcast. I just don't have the right like stuff right now. But uh, definitely thankful for you guys. Y'all y'all play such a big role in this, and y'all don't even realize it. Oh, well, thank you, my man. And I sincerely mean this. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, go get this win Saturday night. We'll talk again soon. Uh, hopefully, maybe you know your next fight could be a contender series one. So that'll be uh, that'll be a lot. Hopefully, man. Whatever whatever God has to throw at me, just not I'm, I'm blessed and I'm just here for the journey, man. I'm just here to to uh, reach my full potential and just shock the world.